Welcome back. A typical task for front-end developers is to fetch some data from the back-end, render it, uh, let the user interact with it somehow, maybe collect some new data and send it back to the server. The problem is that we cannot really trust the data that comes from the back-end. Even if we know that there is a person working on this endpoint right next to us, this situation from the user end can be completely different. A lot of things can go wrong. They might be offline, they might be under VPN or any, anything can happen. So in order to guarantee the best user experience, we have to be ready to handle some of the edge cases. And a good type system can help us with it. It can actually guide us to a solid and sound solution. So in this exercise, we're going to use a website called JSON Placeholder that contains a collection of endpoints. And one of them allows us to fetch a list of to-dos. So we're going to fetch it and render the total amount of to-dos we received. All right, so let's get started. For this exercise, I already have a project set up. So I ran the uh, npx create rescript app. I cleaned up the default setup. So now we have our uh, app.res and I'm going to run the rescript compiler. I'm going to run Vite. So for this exercise, we're going to stick with the use reducer pattern. So I've got the um, use reducer hook over here. Also, we're going to define the shape of our state, some initial state as well, and the actions. So here we are saying that our application gets busy loading the information. Here we received the items and here we um, set the error in case something went wrong. And last but not least, the reducer function. And again, we use pattern matching here. So we match on action and then we uh, just handle our actions like that. So now in our application, we're going to add a button to fetch the to-dos and the Rescript compiler is not really happy with what is happening here. So there are a lot of errors, but we're going to get to it. I'm also going to add this uh, switch statement to render a message if we get any sort of error message. Finally, in case we're busy, we're going to render this message. And then the only option left for us is that we've got the items. So now if we get the items, if we have the empty error, then we're going to render this message, so nothing to show. And if we've got some items, then, then we're just going to render how many of them we received. So now uh, the compiler complains about the to-do service that cannot be found. And it says that it may be either a third-party dependency or we just forgot to build everything or it's just a file that cannot be found. Well, the build is running and it's not the third-party dependency. That's why we're just going to create a new module, uh, which also means a new file. So we're going to not in assets, um, excuse me. So we're going to rent a to do service dot res. All right. So as I mentioned in the beginning, we are going to use the JSON uh, placeholder service to get our um, JSON mocked um, server. So and here we have our to do's and our to do's look like this. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here and I'm just going to define certain types for um, this shape of, of JSON that, that we have. And uh, in our to do service, I'm just going to define the type for our to do. So now in order to fetch this JSON, we need a uh, fetch function. So I'm going to go to risk group website, uh, go to packages and uh, I know that there is a package called web API that we can use. So let me just uh, quickly install that npm install rescript web API. So now we've got our dependency installed and we can add it to our dependency list over here in BS config JSON. Good. And now that means that we can start writing a function uh, to actually fetch our data. This function will take no arguments. So now we can actually open a web API, we can bring this module in. And now what we can do, we can go fetch dot fetch. Now we have this function over here, and we can simply fetch this uh, URL. 
So if we look at the type of this function, it says that it returns the JS promise of some uh, fetch response. What that means is that we can now pipe this response into the uh, response.json function like so to turn this response into a JSON. So now if we check the type, it actually says that now it's a promise of JSON.t. You may be wondering what are those t's all over the place? Promise.t, JSON.t. And basically it's just a convention. In Rescript, modules are similar to namespaces in TypeScript and they can contain types, constructors, variables, and functions. So then you can refer to them like so. The school.profession is a type. School.teacher is a type constructor. School.getprofession is a function. However, that letter T happened to be just a convention to define a generic type inside of a module. So in this case, headers.t, we just follow the convention. And so libraries can refer to very specific types from other libraries that contain other modules. But we have to remember that JSON is just a random data structure. It's, it, it essentially is a string, which means that we have to decode it to make sure that we receive what we expect. In other words, we can defend ourselves and our users as well that the um, information that we receive from the endpoint is is actually what is described in this type. And to get this done, we're going to use the library um, for JSON decoding called Rescript JSON. So let me just uh, quickly install it. Um, over here. And again, we need to add it to our um, config file over here. So now we're ready to write a function to decode our to do's. I have already prepared the function, but let me walk you through it. So I'm going to call it decode to do's and I'm going to bring the json.decode um, module into the scope of this function. And we'll begin with decoding just a single to do. So now because we know that our model contains just four fields, uh, we can um, map over four other decoders. So map four takes four decoders and a function. We're going to use a field decoder with int decoder. The details of this library don't really, really matter. There are tons of libraries for decoding JSONs, but suffice it to say that we just construct our decoder by composing other decoders. So when these four decoders succeed, this function is going to be called with these arguments and now we can construct our to-do. All right, so now we have our decoder for a single to-do. And as a final step in our decoding process, we're going to use this function decode value that takes some value. And um, in our case, that's just JSON. And we pass the array decoder that takes another decoder. Um, and luckily we've got one. So that's decode to-do. And thus we construct a function that takes in some JSON and returns a value of result of array to-do or JSON decode error. A small remark, you may have noticed that there's no return statement here. So the last line is basically what gets returned. Good, so now we have got some JSON, we have a decoder, and what we can do is that we can try to pass this JSON into our decoder. And for that, we can write a function to result that takes JSON, uh, passes it to decode to do's and pattern match on the result. So we know that this decode to do's function uh, gives us the result and the result has uh, two constructors, OK or error. So we pattern match on them. So in our OK constructor, we have array of to do. And in our error constructor, we have some decode error. We can turn this into a string. But as we know from the previous video, we cannot just um, return the array of to do's or string. To fix this issue, we can introduce a type called HTTP result with two constructors that take success with array of to do's and failed with string. So now the error is gone. And the last thing that, that we can do is pipe our JSON into this to result function. Okay, let's check the compiler. There are some errors. Let's look at them. And it looks like in, in our case, it's just a spelling mistake. So let me quickly fix that. Okay, so this problem is gone. But now we have to implement the our button click handler. So let me bring it in real quick. Fix the typo. Cool. So what happens in this function is that we call dispatch set busy. So when we click on the button, we just want to uh, make sure that our application shows the loading state, we call our service load function. 
and it returns the um, HTTP result, which is constructed with two constructors. So now we can pattern match on them and we can dispatch the corresponding actions. So one interesting thing about the promises in Rescript is that there are two functions that correspond to dot then in JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, in this languages, then can swallow promises. So it can take a, a function that returns a, a promise or function that returns a value and it will give just a promise anyway. In Rescript though, if we just start typing dot then, we can see that there are two functions here. Then takes uh, some promise and it takes a function from uh, whatever value is in this promise and it returns a new promise with a new value. So A to TB, right? So A to promise of some B. Well, then resolve takes a promise of A and then it uh, takes a function from A to B and it returns a promise of B. So in this case, I use dot then, but we can replace it with and then resolve and now we don't need this last calls I just realized that good so now you may ask what is this promise dot done so the um the point is without this promise dot done our function is going to return a promise which is not what we need in our on click handler the on click handler uh, should return a unit so if we save that we can see that um, um the type that is required is mouse event to unit not the promise. And this um, promise dot done helps us to just ignore that, that, that promise and it returns the unit. Good, so everything compiles and we can try to uh, interact with our application in the browser. So let me, let me grab the URL. And if we open that, let me zoom in a bit. So now we have our button, fetch to this doesn't look like button, but it's, it's not about styling, it's about functionality. So if we fetch to this, now we've got 200 items to show. But now let's simulate the problem. So if we go to our to-do service and we misspell this um, URL, and if we reload our page and fetch to-dos, we see that our decoder fails. So it, it says that expected some array, but it received something else. And that is because in our to-do service, uh, when, when we hit the error, we just returned that it failed with some string. In reality, we can show a bit more meaningful message to our user that something went wrong, maybe even suggest a way to recover from, from this error. But also we can definitely log this error to our monitoring system, which will help us analyze it later. All right, so what if we hit another kind of error and it's not actually uh, the URL which is wrong, but we, we received the unexpected data from the server, Let's Let's say instead of um, this user ID in camel case, we received, uh, we expected to receive user underscore ID. So what happens in this case, let me just reload the page over here. If we fetch that, it will actually tell us that uh, I tried to pass uh, this object, but I needed the user underscore ID. So this is what I uh, received and, and this is what I expected to have in this JSON object. And again, this is a very useful error message to see in our monitoring system. Okay, let's fix the bug. So now everything should work. So I hope you can see the benefits of this style of programming, the defensive programming, and how the type system can help us get the sound solution. I also hope you had a chance to appreciate the power of um, algebraic data types, especially some types. They really help to model the uh, behavior of our system in a meaningful and self-descriptive way. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.